Okay, our next topic for discussion is pediatric surgery in the newborn. We're going to start off with esophageal atresia. And esophageal atresia is usually going to happen at the baby's first feeding at birth. And the baby's going to present with choking spells with excessive salivation. When we see these symptoms, we're going to actually diagnose these patients by passing an NG tube through. And on the chest x-ray, we're going to see the NG tube coiled up in the upper chest. And this is what's going to confirm our diagnosis. So if we see choking spells at birth, we're going to pass an NG tube through. And on the chest x-ray, the NG tube is actually going to be coiled up in the upper chest. And that's going to confirm our diagnosis. Before we initiate therapy in these patients, what we have to do is we have to rule out VACTOR. VACTOR is the acronym for vertebra, anus, cardiac, and renal congenital anomalies. And to rule out vertebral congenital anomalies, we're going to check the x-ray. To rule out anal anomalies, we're going to inspect visually for imperforation. To rule out cardiac anomalies, we're going to do an echocardiogram. And to rule out renal anomalies, we're going to do a sonogram. Our primary um, favored method is to do surgical repair. But if for any reason surgical repair is delayed, we want to do gastrostomy to protect the lungs from acid reflux. Our next topic is imperforate anus. And in the imperfect anus, there's an absence of normal anal opening. And it's going to be characterized by the baby having an absence of flatus or stool at birth. We're going to see this visually. And to diagnose, we're going to do an x-ray of the abdomen to locate the lesion or an ultrasound of the perineum. Now, basically, in the imperfect anus, we want to look for a fistula nearby, a fistula to the vagina or to the perineum. And before we do this, we want to rule out vector just like we did in esophageal atresia. And once we've ruled out vector as congenital anomalies, we're going to look for the fistulas. And if the fistulas are present, we're going to delay repair until further growth, but before toilet training. So we have to repair this before toilet training. If there's no fistula and there's a low imperforate anus, our treatment is perineal anoplasty. And if there's no fistula and there's a high imperfect anus, we're going to do a colostomy. Next topic is congenital diaphragmatic hernia, which is going to present with a baby coming in with dyspnea, and it's going to be noted at birth. These babies are going to be in respiratory distress. And diagnostically, we're going to do an x-ray, which is going to show loops of bowel in the left chest. And remember, this is always going to be on the left side, okay? The problem isn't actually the mechanical problem. It's actually going to be the hypoplastic lung that's going to be the problem. And basically, we said the respiratory, the patients are going to have res respiratory distress. So we're going to have to do endotracheal intubation, low pressure ventilation, NG suction, and sedation. But in order to treat these patients, we have to wait three to four days because we have to allow the fetal lungs to mature before we repair the defect. Most of these babies are actually diagnosed before birth by sonogram, but difficult cases may actually require something called ECMO, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, and it's used in difficult cases. So remember, congenital diaphragmatic hernia, dyspnea noted at birth, patient's going to have respiratory distress, we're going to see loops of bowel in the left chest. Because they're in respiratory distress, we're going to do endotracheal intubation, low pressure ventilation, NG suction and sedation, we have to wait three to four days because we have to allow the fetal lungs to mature and we're going to do ECMO in difficult cases. Next is gastroschisis and omphalocele. And basically, they're going to show up with an abdominal wall defect in the middle of the belly. In omphalocele, you have a sac and the sac is formed from an outpatching of the peritoneum and it's going to protrude in the midline through the umbilicus. In gastroschisis, there's no sac like you have an omphalocele, and the intestines are actually going to protrude outside the fetal abdomen with no protective membrane. Remember, in gastroschisis, the bowel is going to actually look angry. It's going to look matted, okay? And in omphalocele, the cord is going to go directly to the defect. What are we going to do in these patients? We're going to do IV fluids, broad-spectrum antibiotics. In omphalocele, we have a sac. So we actually want to cover the sac with non-adherent gauze, then wrap it with curlix and a piece of saran wrap before we close it. 
large defects, we're going to use something called silastic sheets. And they're going to be sutured to the full thickness of the enlarged abdominal wall defect. So remember, we need to use the silostatic silo for large defects because we want to house and protect the bowel. And in omphalocele, we're going to do another thing to distinguish omphalocele from gastroschisis. Gastroschisis, since we said the bowel is really angry and matted, we actually have to get vascular access as, as well to give them parenteral nutrition. And this can be an important point on your CCS. If we see gastroschisis, we want to start, we want to get IV access and we want to start parenteral nutrition. Next topic is extrophy of the urinary bladder. This is going to happen above the pubis, above the pubis, and it's going to be a failure of the abdominal wall to close during fetal development. And it's going to result in the protrusion of the posterior bladder wall through the lower abdominal wall. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? We've got to transfer these newborns immediately to, spe to a specialized center. Okay? It's really important. And the repair has to be done within one to two days of the baby's life. Delayed repairs are not going to work in these babies. And even with successful surgery, babies are going to have long-term problems such as incontinence, urinary reflux, pain, urinary prolapse, and sexual dysfunction. So remember, an extra fee of the bladder, it's going to be over the pubis, but it's going to be an abdominal wall defect and it's going to be wet and shining with urine and it's going to result in protrusion of the posterior bladder through the lower abdominal wall we got to transfer these newborns immediately to a specialized center because it can only be repaired within the first one or two days of life and it's going to be repaired with surgical reconstruction of the bladder and genitalia and these babies are going to have long-term problems Our last topic is intestinal atresia. And in intestinal atresia, we're going to get narrowing or absence of a portion of the intestine. And this defect can happen in the small intestine or the large intestine. It's going to show up with green vomiting. But instead of the double bubble, as we see in duodenal atresia, there's going to be multiple air fluid levels throughout the abdomen. We're going to diagnose this before birth, usually by routine sonogram or by the development of polyhydramnios. Remember that this condition happens secondary to a vascular accident in utero. And imagine management is going to be laparotomy after birth. If the area affected is small, the surgeon can remove the damaged portion and join the intestines back together. So quick review. Esophageal atresia, atresia, we're going to have choking spells at birth. We're going to do an NG tube, and it's going to get caught up, and it's going to be coiled up in the upper chest. We're going to rule out Bacter, and we're going to do surgical repair, and if the surgical repair is delayed, we're going to do gastrostomy. Imperforate anus is going to be diagnosed visually at first, and it's if we, if we see an absence of flattish or stool at birth, we're going to suspect this, and we're going to do an x-ray of the abdomen to locate the lesion or an ultrasound of the perineum. We're going to rule out Bacter, and if the fistula is present, we're going to delay repair until further growth, but before toilet training. And if no fistula, we're going to do um, a low imperforate anus, we're going to do a perineal anoplasty. High imperforate, we're going to do a colostomy. Congenital diaphragmatic hernia, dyspnea at birth. X-ray is going to show loops of bowel in the left chest. We're going to do the management here. We're going to wait three to four days to allow the fetal lung to mature, and we're going to do an ECMO in difficult cases. On seal and gastroschisis, we're going to use we're going to do IV fluids, broad spectrum antibiotics, and cover on seal sacs with a non-adherent gauze. And large defects, we're going to do a silostatic sheet. Extra fee of the bladder, we're going to transfer these newborns immediately to a specialized center because we have to we have to treat them within one to two days, and they often have long-term problems. And intestinal atresia is usually diagnosed before birth by sonogram. And the management is laparotomy right after birth. So the surgeon can remove the damaged portion of the intestines and bring them back together.